In this video, I'd like to talk about the paper called Entropy Enigma that explores the success and failure cases of entropy minimization. And on top of it, it introduces a new method to estimate the accuracy of a given model on a dataset that we don't necessarily have any labels for it. But before watching this video, I expect you to know how this entropy minimization works. If you don't, then check out the video I have. And if you know, then let's get into it. From tent, you might recall this figure that shows there is a correlation between entropy and error rate. And low entropy results in low error rate. And what that means is that let's assume we have five classes and our model is 80% sure that the given input has a label of class one. By applying this entropy minimization, we essentially try to bolster the confidence and increase it to 100%. So there is a belief that people think this tent or any other entropy minimization technique that came after that, they're trying to make the model more confident on what it is actually true, and that results a boost in accuracy. However, in this paper, they show that this is partially true. And to show why, they have done this analysis that on the legends, you see they have different colors that they correspond to excluding top K predictions. What that means is that let's assume this is the output of our model. Once we say exclude zero, that means keep every data as is and do not exclude anything. But once we say exclude top one, that means let's look at the model prediction. Based on this output, it classified the given input as the class two. If it is actually the class 2, then that means we have a correct output. And in this case, we exclude them from the training data of entropy minimization technique. So entropy minimization only receives the data that the model in fact estimate them as a wrong class. For example, the class could be 1, but the output of the model is 2. And this entropy minimization should bolster the confidence and be even more sure on giving this output 2 which is even more wrong. So based on the assumption of entropy minimization, this should significantly deteriorate the performance of entropy minimization. But in this paper, they showed that it doesn't. And also, once we say exclude the top two, that means let's say in our prediction, the ground truth is the class one. Even though we output the class two, class one has the second highest probability score and we want to even exclude these data from the training of the entropy minimization to make the task even more harder than what it is. I guess you get the idea from the rest of the legends. And interestingly, we see that without excluding anything on ImageNet C dataset that has a Gaussian noise level 3 to make it cropped it, the tent method without excluding anything can increase the accuracy by 12.38%. But when we exclude the top 1 results from the training, it still can boost the accuracy up to 10.5%. And the gap between them is not as much as what we expected. And even more interestingly, with excluding top 10, we can get 7.88% improvement in accuracy. So now the question is, what makes the entropy minimization work? They have done an experiment on ImageNet, but intuitively, let's just say we have these three classes, and the average embedding of the training data is denoted by this star symbol. Initially, after supervised training, we have a TSNE representation of the model output to be something like this, that we can see each class is in different area of the space and they can be separated. Once we apply the entropy minimization technique, we see that it helps the model form a well-separated cluster around the mean embedding of the training data of each class. But if we train this entropy minimization much, the clusters start to diverge from the mean embedding and this is when the failure happens. And to quantitatively measure this failure, they use silhouette score to determine how good the cluster quality is. It essentially gives us a value between 0 and 1, and as it is more close to 1, we have better clusters that each entry is close to its own cluster and far away from the rest. And the other thing that they measured is Hungarian method, that this shows how away the cluster is from the mean embedding of the training data. From the silhouette scores, we can see that in blue colors, which happens early in the training, which I showed as success in the previous slide, the more silhouette score means the better clustering, and it is positively correlated to the accuracy. But the brown ones only happen in the second phase, that even though we have a better clusters, the accuracy is negatively affected. 
and the reason is the shift distance between the clusters and the average embedding of the training data. We see that as clusters start to diverge from the mean embedding of the training data, the accuracy becomes worse. So here comes the idea that let's develop a method to estimate accuracy based on this new knowledge that we have. A naive approach is by using these silhouette scores and shift distances, but none of them are a good idea. Why we cannot use silhouette score? Because each dataset has a different distribution in clustering, and that results a different score that can be interpreted differently, and the score does not mean the same in different datasets. And shift distance requires us to know the average embedding of the training data, which, as I explained in the 10th video, we do not always have access to the training data, and sometimes we have access only to the test data. So how can we use a method to estimate the accuracy only given the test data? To answer this question, they first did another analysis, which they have done an experiment in the initial round of entropy minimization technique that we have a success convergence and results become better and better. And in this figure, they show what is the relationship between silhouette score, model accuracy, and the label flips. We can see that as we increase the silhouette score on the x-axis, the dots become lighter and lighter, and that means we have a better accuracy for classes that have a better clustering format, and worse for classes that their clusters are kind of scattered in the space, which kind of makes sense. But the thing is that we can also see on the y-axis that as we increase the label flips, the model is less accurate for those samples. So when we apply entropy minimization, if the model is not very confident about something and the accuracy is low, then it is more likely for model to change its decision. So there is some sort of negative correlation between accuracy and label flips, and that made the others wonder if they could use it somehow for accuracy estimation. And that is where they propose this weighted flips. You can see that they use an identity function that it outputs one only when throughout the entropy minimization the label of a data that the model predicts becomes different. But instead of just counting them, they multiply each flips by the confidence score that they initially had. Because if a model says, let's just say I am 90% confident the input belongs to class 1, but then after this entropy minimization it changes the decision, that should have more influence in our estimate compared to when the model is only, let's just say, 55% sure. And once they measure these weighted flips for different datasets, they plot this figure that on x-axis we can see the weighted flips and on y-axis the actual accuracy that we can get by leveraging the ground truth labels. And then they decided to fit a function f that given the weighted flips as input, we could estimate the accuracy as the output. And this is the function they got eventually, that given x, which is the weighted flips as input, we can get accuracy as output. And it works. They have tested it on different models, on different data sets, and as you can see, they have a good correlation, and this function f can model it. And to quantitatively see that, you can see on this bottom side of this table that on average they have 5.75% error in accuracy estimation, but this is mostly because of the worst case scenario, which is 21.61% difference in accuracy. And excluding the worst case scenario, that rarely happens, as you can see, the average error they have is 5.03%. So with only 5% error, without having any labels, using this technique, we can estimate the accuracy. And yes, that's all I wanted you to know about this paper. If you have enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next video, goodbye.